Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and I am so excited because in today's video, we're talking all about small home design mistakes that are making them look even smaller and what we can do to fix them. Now, the first thing we have to talk about is actually the furniture layouts of each space. This has a huge impact on the way we visually see the space, the expansiveness of that space and whether or not it looks large or small, no matter the size of it. And I want you to keep in mind that a lot of times when you see photos of spaces, they are using a wide angle lens or they're staging them in an interesting way, or they're using furniture layouts that make them look more open. Now, how do you achieve this in your home? Well, there's a lot of different layouts you could choose, and I recommend checking out this video right here where I talk about the most popular layouts and how to do them in your home but you can also work off of the principle that you want to look into a space. And that's a good thing to keep in mind as you're discovering and you're designing your space, you're figuring out your furniture layout, because I want to see the most of that space, the actual things we're gonna be using and the floor as possible. An example would be, I wanna walk into a living room and see the sofa and see the seat on the sofa. I wanna see the cushions on the sofa. I wanna see the floor in front of the sofa because that's making it look more open and inviting for me to walk into the space as opposed to walking into a room and seeing the back of a sofa. Now you may have a situation where you have that happen, you just don't have a choice, but then we can work off of that and layer with the scale of furniture. So those actually take up less visual weight and we see the floor underneath them and that's a big takeaway. I want to see as much of the floor as possible, as much of the, the corners and the baseboard in your space as possible because it'll make it look bigger. In a bedroom, for example, you're going to make it look bigger by walking in and seeing the foot of the bed, having that in front of you. It makes it look more open and more expansive no matter the size of the space. And there is something to be said for taking advantage of the layout you have. Sometimes you just can't use these principles in a smaller space because often I find a smaller home tends to be a little older and maybe has more walls and less open concept, right? An open concept space feels a lot bigger in the same amount of square footage. If you see more of the floor, the home is going to look bigger, more open, and more accessible. So the main point I want to get across here is that we want to look into a space. I want to see the actual flooring area within that room as we first enter it. That's what's going to make a small home look larger as opposed to blocking that off and closing that space in. If we don't see the floor, the space feels smaller, it feels more condensed, and that's the opposite of making it look and feel bigger and more open. Now, like I said, be sure you check out this video right up here to learn all about the best layouts for your home that will really make it feel more open and expansive. And if you're struggling with a smaller home or a larger home, you're struggling with any design questions, I am at your service. You can always book a one-on-one -on -one virtual consultation with me where we can talk about all of your design and decorating needs and what the solutions for them are. Be sure you head to the description box down below or go to intro.co slash Garrett Lachic. Now, one piece of design advice you hear all of the time is to not push your furniture against a wall. People will say like, oh, rich people don't push their furniture against a wall or, you know, designers don't do this. I'm sitting on a sofa that's pushed against a wall. Designers do this all of the time because it's about the needs of the space, not the perception of size or luxury or whatever. Sometimes the best answer for a space is to push the furniture against a wall. And that's the next mistake you are making is that you're not doing that enough. In a small space, you're limited and pushing the furniture against the wall, having the sofa back against the wall is perfectly acceptable because it gives you more floor space, makes your home feel and look more open and larger, and also it gives you more accessibility. And sometimes that's just what you need. A console table, for example, should go against a wall. It shouldn't just be floating in the middle of the room. But a dining table should probably not be pushed into a wall or a corner because it makes it feel very cramped. And maybe that's something we get creative with or you do in your space. I actually have a client who has a small kitchen and instead of adding additional cabinetry that would take away from the dining space, we pushed a table against a wall. It just made sense for the usability and the functionality of her kitchen, and it works flawlessly. So sometimes that's the creative solution, and you have to take advantage of the floor space you have. If you don't have a lot of it, push the piece of furniture against a wall. Whenever we talk about pushing things up against a wall, I always get inspired by 
banquettes in kitchens, like seating areas that are built in. If you have a smaller space, a small kitchen, that could be a really creative way to add that dining area in there, make it super functional. And it also reduces the amount of space you need because you don't have to have your chairs pulled out all of the way to get into there, right? It, it stays where it is, it's in place. That can be a really good way to add additional seating to a smaller space in a dining room that you need. They can actually be built in relatively easily. You can buy them that are pre-built and just sit in place there, which I think is great. My husband actually insists that the next house we live in has to have a banquette in the kitchen. A small apartment living room would be very similar to my studio, my office layout right here, where I have a sofa against a wall and I have two chairs opposite that. And I have a large piece of art on the wall across from it and behind my sofa. You could do something like that in a smaller apartment living room. Trade one of the pieces of art for a television, add a console underneath it, and it's a perfect living room layout for a small space. In a small home, a micro space, pushing the furniture against the wall is the best answer. It doesn't always have to be a floated living room. That works if you have a large enough space for it. That's what I have in my living room downstairs because the layout of my house just works that way. But upstairs here in this room, it's just not possible. So there's no point in even attempting to do it. And that's okay. You just have to accept the fact that you're in a smaller space and you're accommodating that. So push some of that furniture against the wall and give us more floor space to walk on and see. It'll make your smaller space look bigger, larger, more open and we can combine that with more open style furniture pieces which we're going to talk about in just a minute to make it look even more expansive and take the fullest advantage of the space that you do have. Another design mistake I see people in small homes make is that you are looking at larger homes for inspiration which is fine but there's sometimes things that we just can't do in a smaller home. One of those is to use too many colors, specifically your color schemes on your walls and the way that works within your furnishings. Having too many different colors in a small home will make it look and feel busy. When a space feels busy, it feels chaotic, it feels crowded, it feels condensed and smaller. So in a small home, we don't want that. I like to be consistent with the wall color in a space, and you can even go as far as the ceiling color. Be consistent with it throughout each of those areas and spaces, and then we can layer in interesting colors and details and features through soft furnishings, through rugs, through upholstered pieces, through wood tones even. And you can have a lot of fun that way, still infuse color into your space, but neutralize all of the walls in your home to create a space that looks and feels bright more open and bigger and less chaotic at the same time. What do I mean by that? Let's not have accent walls all over the place, right? Like if you have one small living room, we can paint that one color, be consistent throughout it. And in the kitchen that's off of that, for example, it doesn't have to be through painting the walls. It can be through a window treatment, accessories you're bringing in and putting on the counters. It can be through the color of your dining chairs in that space. You can pull that color throughout the space and create consistency in a color scheme, and that'll actually make your home feel a little bit bigger and less busy and easier to take in. In a smaller space, sometimes you just have a lot going on and having too much of that means we can't focus in, we can't relax. Our eye doesn't get the chance to rest and view the space and take it all in. So reducing the amount of colors you have all over the place is one way to do that. And that does not mean you have to do neutral everything. We're sick of it. I don't love seeing everything being white or everything being beige. You can have fun with color. You just have to be consistent about the colors you're using. In my home, some of the rooms are white. Some of the rooms are off-white, but I also have rich, beautiful, saturated colors in certain areas. My dining room, for example, in my bedroom. Yes, I know, I talk a lot about color and what you can do, and we love our, our white home lovers. We love the beige girls, okay? We know you appreciate the aesthetic and we appreciate you, which is why, if you haven't already, you should take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Join us, become a part of our Le Chic family. We would love to have you here, and I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, joining us, calling yourself an OG before we hit our 100,000 subscriber goal. I'd also greatly appreciate it if you would help me to defeat the YouTube algorithm by giving this video a like. When it comes to a small home, one of the design mistakes I see all of the time is that you get overwhelmed, you get a little frustrated, you get a little confused or blocked when you're decorating and designing it, and sometimes people just bring in a lot of extra stuff to compensate. So we have to declutter. 
That's the big thing. Decluttering, reducing the amount of visual weight of all of the busyness in a space makes such a huge difference. Getting rid of things that you don't need, not having extra things sitting in a corner, and sometimes that means adding more functional pieces of furniture. In a small home, you probably have a little less storage, but the interesting thing about life is that we all have to live it and we all need things to do that. So whether you're in a ultra minimalistic teeny home or you're in a big, large, oversized, you know, ma mansion house, you probably still need the same amount of basic things and they're gonna need somewhere to go. Reducing the amount of stuff you have on like a table surface or in a corner, less is definitely more when it comes to a small home, but increasing the amount of storage space you have also is a game changer. And there's lots of creative ways you can do that. One is adding a storage piece of furniture, adding a console, adding a credenza, something closed that will get you that extra space you might need. Something else, a storage ottoman. That's great. I have, I have clients who they have an Airbnb and they have a number of suites in that Airbnb. And one of the things I said was, put a bench at the foot of every bed and that way we can stash extra bedding in there. It can be hidden away. And if a guest needs it, they can access it you can incorporate that into your own home. If you have a big empty wall somewhere or small home, small empty wall, you know, you can add a functional piece of furniture, a bench, it adds additional seating. It's a beautiful way to add a soft furnishing into the space and another color, but it's also functional because it has storage. There are plenty of sectional sofas that have storage in the chaise part of it. That's a great piece to bring in to help you declutter and maybe add some off season storage for things you're not using right now. Get creative about declutter your home and reducing the amount of things you have. Because let's say your home is perfectly put together and everything is great and organized and you open the cabinets and like it's all just full of everything, you still get that feeling of being overwhelmed by the amount of stuff in a space, even if you can't see it when you first enter. There's a lot of livability that happens when it comes to interior design. Like we look at how do you enjoy a space? How are you using it? How do you function in that space? And sometimes that means you have to get rid of some of the stuff and decluttering can be hard when and everything you own is beautiful, I get it, but sometimes it's just what needs to happen. So focus in on those important pieces, those meaningful pieces, those sentimental pieces, and then start phasing through the things that really just don't mean anything that's decor for the sake of it and you could let go of. A top design mistake I see made in small homes is that everything is the wrong size. And by everything, I mean, a handful of pieces and we can really make a big difference just changing out a couple of things. You know, for example, furniture like a furniture set. I'm not gonna rag on it today and tell you to get rid of it or let it go, but they tend to be very bulky in some of the pieces. Like a sofa, for example, is a, is a pretty average size, okay? They're usually a good size sofa in a furniture set, fine. But then we have a love seat or a two-seater sofa and then you have the chair that matches and they're basically just one-seater versions or two-seater versions of the sofa, and they have too much bulk to them. That's a piece I would say let go of. Keep the sofa and let's get rid of the chair and bring in something slightly smaller. But the same is also true of different pieces in your home. You can have too small of pieces. A lot of people also like smaller pieces because they tend to be more affordable and you can kind of buy them over time and build up to having enough stuff in your space. But having too many small pieces, once again, brings us back to that point of it could be chaotic in your space to have a ton of little stuff all over the place. We're covering up the floor with a bunch of little bits and pieces. Well, that doesn't make your space look larger. It doesn't make it feel more open or more relaxing. It makes it look busier. So yes, you're getting functionality out of it, but it might not be the right piece. Sometimes in a smaller home, bigger is better. Getting a larger oversized you know, media console under that TV is gonna be better than having two small cabinets or chairs or whatever cluttered underneath it. Something I also really love to do in homes is stack coffee tables because I find the best shape of coffee table is either rectangular or open oval, but those can be harder tables to find that fit the scale of a smaller space. So I'll stack two tables together. And that can be a good thing to do, but we're adding two tables in. So it looks a little busier. We need to reduce what's happening somewhere else. So maybe instead of getting two chairs to flank that living room, we get one. What I'm trying
trying to get at is scale here. Scale makes a difference. And you can look back at any point in this video and pinpoint pieces that are smaller scale. A chair, for example, an accent chair. I like them that are more open. They don't have a lot of bulk in their base that you can see underneath them. They have open arms because they feel smaller, even though they might take up a same size or even larger footprint than that piece that looks bulkier. You can do the same thing with a sofa. You can get something that has a taller legs and you can see under it more, or you could get something that's smaller and more dense in its design, like the sofa I have here in my studio. It goes all the way to the floor. There's no feet underneath here. There's no getting underneath it or whatever. So it has a little bit of bulk to it, but it's a little thinner. So it's not a big lounging, reclining sofa. You have to think about how do you use your space and what can you bring in that's going to reduce the size or the scale of those pieces and make them actually feel more balanced. That's something to remember also. Add more vertical elements. They make your space look taller. They bring your eye up and they actually make it look more open. That's why we say bring your drapes to the ceiling because we like that big, long vertical element in the space. So look for artwork that's oversized as well. Having a lot of little artwork on your wall can feel very busy and very chaotic. One large piece is going to shrink down the scale of all of the furniture in the space, make all of that look smaller, which makes the all of the areas we don't have furniture look bigger. Something else you could do in a smaller space is actually use smaller throw pillows and accent pillows on a sofa or chairs. Having big oversized or even square pillows they actually have a lot of bulk to them, so sometimes it's good to reduce the scale of something with a smaller pillow. The correct size rug will also do that. Instead of having a smaller rug, one larger one that actually extends underneath the furniture. If your furniture is backed up against a wall like we already talked about, I don't think you need to bring your rug to the wall, but like halfway, three quarters of the way under that furniture is a good place to bring it, but it will make that furniture area look more defined and actually look bigger than it is. So you you can actually make a small space look bigger by bringing in bigger pieces that fit that space correctly. And my last tip for a small home that you need to remember, absolutely don't forget, is to measure. Measure everything and make sure it actually fits. Make sure you can get it through doorways into that space if you're living in a condo or an apartment building. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure you click on this gorgeous little photo of me right here to subscribe. This video right here is gonna tell you all about those layouts that I mentioned you need to know about and this one right here, you gotta check this one out because this is all about taking advantage of that small kitchen your small house probably has. And I will see you over there.